Finally, soccer is good for something. I kid. I love soccer. Here's uh, Israel Prime Minister congratulating Iran on their exploits in something called the World Cup. Apparently, the World Cup is a competition between countries that play soccer. It's very popular around the world. Can you imagine how hard it is to stop Ronaldo from scoring a goal? I used to play soccer. Let me tell you, it's almost impossible. But the Iranian team just did the impossible. To the Iranian people, I say, you showed courage on the playing field. And today you show the same courage in the streets of Iran. That's why I offered medical aid to save Iranian lives after a devastating earthquake. One day I'll hope to watch Iran's soccer team go head-to-head -head against Israel in a free Tehran. On that day, we'll all be winners. Hmm. So as we worry about incivility within our own borders, we're watching olive branches sprouting from all over. Somewhat similar to Trump's North Korea experiment, Netanyahu is taking a we'll-see-what-happens approach to Iran trying to lower the temperature by appealing to similar human needs and desires. We all like soccer and watching soccer with our families, and you can only really do that when there's peace and prosperity. Netanyahu is creating a contrast between what is and what could be. Does that sound familiar? As John Bolton and his mustache meets with Putin, there seems to be a new pattern taking shape. And while world leaders have exchanged pleasantries before, this feels different. It's as if peace is being sold and finally people are buying. Huh. Let's hope these opportunities aren't squandered the way they were before. So if an outstretched hand works with North Korea, which can go either way at this point, or Iran or Russia, maybe it can work with our fellow Americans too. To quote the guy who kicked, the, kicked this whole thing off, we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, Dana, there's a couple of things here. Uh, He's appealing to what's going on in Iran right now. Mm -hmm. The streets of Iran, the people are out on the streets. So they're, out, they're having a lot of protests because we put our sanctions back on. That started to have an immediate effect because sanctions are effective. Unlike before, however, and I would just say way back, these protests in this week, they are in the streets are shouting death to the Palestinians, not death to the United States. Mm. They are focused on their government as being the enemy of the people of Iran. Mm. That is, provides a big opening. And I imagine that Netanyahu, their intel is great, so they're figuring out if you can talk directly to the people of Iran, they might be able to force change in their leadership. The other thing I would say is that the freedom of information, being able to get unfiltered, raw information through people's phones on the internet rather than through state television could be a really big answer in Iran, Venezuela, other places, maybe even North Korea mm -hmm. and Russia, frankly. Jesse, I'm a little worried about what's going on in North Korea now. Have you been following that stuff? Uh, there's, there was some detail, some, uh, some, I guess, satellite, well, satellite images showing that they might have started new work on a nuclear facility. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's troubling. I, I think that Trump needs to re-engage on that, and uh, I'm sure he will. Get the stick keep and the that, carrot. Right. Keep the momentum going on that. Maybe he needs to play around a round of golf with uh, Kim Jong-un. <laughs> or, uh, you know, I think, obviously, sports is, a, is an elixir. Remember the spirit around the country during the Olympics? Yes. That's always positive. And uh, you saw what happened with North and South Korea on that front. And uh, when Trump plays golf with people, I think that always so play Kate forms, uh, you know, placate the the leader of North Moon Korea. Mm -hmm. I was kidding about the round of golf. Oh, really? I yes. But you know, you're such but a you know what? I Maybe took you seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at Mar-a-Lago they might go for uh, you know a round of 18. Who knows? But uh, in all seriousness, I think uh, I think, I think people are uh, moving away from isolationism to a certain extent into a new era of engagement. It's just interesting that Donald Trump is uh, and Netanyahu are the ones leading that right. charge. Yeah. Juan, don't you think that there, there could be a summit in the offing? Uh, if the U.S. and North Korea can do it, why not Israel and Iran? Uh, I don't see that coming. <laughs> I don't see well, the realist. I, I don't see that in the cards. But I, I must say, I was awed by the way you put icing or pink eyeglasses on to talk about what's going on in North Korea. Maybe, I... maybe you could do that, too, with Harley Davidson moving out as a result of Trump's tariff. Go ahead and try, but, I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, if this was Obama, you guys would be celebrating. Oh, look, at North Korea is out there doing their own thing. Uh, but... We wouldn't be celebrating. Oh. Nobody <laughs> wants that. Nobody wants that. No. Uh, the point yeah, is yeah. it needs to be addressed. It needs to push back on them. And maybe it's time for a, some more fire and fury, not golf or chocolate cake yeah. from Mar-a-Lago, although...
that would be nice. <laughs> but I mean, he's got he's not going to put up with it, that's for sure. So if Kim Jong Un wants to, you know, play, you know, cutesy with President Trump, but you think again, you'll lose that battle. By the way, I I do enjoy soccer. I just don't enjoy watching it. I love playing it. It's fun to play, but it's not enough scoring for me, I guess. Well, America's not in it this year, so it's tough. A lot of running yes. around. A lot of running around, and I don't like running around. <laughs> I like people to bring the ball to me.